Hi everybody, um, I'm Juanito and I'm going to show you a little bit of my double plus bass trigger, I mean uh, kick drum. It's based on the Thomas Henry bass plus plus, at least that's the core of it. I've done extensive modifications, which I will show you, well, now. I won't talk about the circuitry, I'll show the schematic, I'll link to the schematic in the comments or in the in the description of the video. Oh, there's a little spider. Hey buddy. Okay. Go be safe. Alright. Um, okay, turning it on. Oh, and I have my little oscilloscope as well. Here's my uh, trigger button. Okay, so what we have with this is we have the trigger, which is actually soldered to the back of the jack. We have the pitch, which I've modified by making it um, respond in a more exponential way, making the lower, making it much easier. Oh, I should put knobs on this. Okay. I put knobs on it, and I figured out a way to have my phone be sitting here hands-free with, hopefully, this thing in the picture as well. Okay, so now I can explain the features. Um, one of the biggest changes I made was this wave button, which controls a wave. Uh, where's the volume? Okay, it was there the whole time. I just had everything turned down. All right, so here's the, okay, turn the pitch up and the decay. See, this is a triangle chord. That's basically what the original bass plus plus had. Turning this wave control first makes it louder, and then it makes it go a little rounded, more rounded. That's a pretty good um, sign with little it's clipping. It's cool. And then it goes almost square. It does go square. That's really loud. Actually, it goes to uh, goes to wave folding, which is due to a resistor that I might need to adjust if you don't want that behavior. Anyway, the wave shaping is one of the biggest. Yeah, I went with it being a near sign. It's almost impossible to hear with my teeny little speakers. So we'll go ahead and leave it be a little bit. Uh, overdriven. Okay. Um, the pitch is much more controllable in the original design. The useful bass drum pitch is from like here to here. And that's the useful bass drum pitch. Also, in the original design, the, atten uh, the CV attenuation knob also changes the pitch. So does the sweep knob. Um, the sweep is handled the pitch sweep is handled totally different in this. We'll go over that in a second. So now we have a very low. Um, that says 37 hertz. 26 hertz. What's all the way at the bottom? 15 hertz. Turn up the decay. Where's the decay? There it is. Yeah, I can hear it clicking through my speakers. Just the speaker cone flopping around, right? So then, 85 hertz is a nice tight high kick, 54, that's about the 808 pitch. You can still get higher pitches if you like. All right, the sweep is handled totally different in the original. The sweep is a function of the decay. The longer the decay, the more gradual the pitch fall, basically. It is um, 
the sweep knob in the original takes a, a percentage, a um, amount of that voltage, and sends it to the VCO. With mine, I have it so that the The height, quotation marks, of the sweep is controlled by this knob. The decay of the sweep is controlled by this knob. So you can have the height of the pitch sweep all the way up, have the decay turned almost all the way down, and have that little snappy higher pitch at the beginning of the, uh, of the decay attack. get closer to an 808. That's just a little sag. That's a little much. But anyway, there you go. So the height and the sweep are handled differently. The impulse generation is basically, the impulse note at the beginning is basically the same as Thomas Henry's design. There it is high. Here it is low. Um, the impulse is really hard to hear right now, but when you're playing... Oh, I didn't put knobs on those buttons. I mean, potentiometers. When you're playing through a serious system, the, this impulse can make a massive change, massive difference to your sound. It can really just punch, the, you know, it can just punch your chest. Fantastic. Um, what else did I change? I also added an envelope out, which is right here. The envelope can be... See the red light? or it can go positive. Now, if the impulse is in the negative, a lot of VCOs, uh, I mean VCAs, which you might want to use for um, ducking, sidechain compressing, a lot of VCAs kind of ignore negative values, so it would need to be either slewed with a different module, or it would need to be, uh, your VCA would have to have a slew feature to be able to accept and understand negative control voltages. Uh, there's also a volume out, which I replaced the sweep volume. I took that out because you have an impulse volume. You can have your 808s have almost no impulse. And that's good. Yeah. Um, the CV attenuation doesn't do anything um, to the pitch. folding territory. When you get it just folding a teeny bit, it starts to sound like a uh, speaker come break down. <laughs> okay, that's a little much, but you kind of get the idea. Increase the gain of the height because it would be nice to have it all the way down, the pitch be all the way down, and to basically subsonic, but have the pitch really kick it into higher territory. Ah, oh, if I had a big system, that would sound so good. All right, that is an explanation of the double plus bass. Hope you enjoy it. Keep an eye out for, I'll put a Discord um, invite in the uh, notes so you can join uh, my Discord and discuss and make sure you find out if this is ever available in a PCB form. Uh, but the schematic will already be up there and feel free to make your own PCB. All right, uh, make sure you watch to the end of this video.